Hey folks, Scott Fisher here, and today we're going to talk about my latest painting for Wentworth Gallery, which is uh, the gallery that represents my work. And the cool thing about Wentworth Gallery is they actually represent literal rock stars like Paul Stanley, the singer from Kiss, the drummer from Def Leppard, who do art. They're also in this gallery. Me being a fantasy artist, I thought it'd be kind of fun to do a rock and roll fantasy inspired sort of paintings. And um, Joan Jett is uh, amongst them. So uh, it was a blast to do this. Hope you guys dig it. Let's check it out. All right, as usual with me, we're gonna start with a nice drawing to go by. You're looking at a lot of reference of Joan, doing some work out of my head, Def, and looking at her iconic guitar that she plays. I take that drawing and I print it out and I mount it to panel that you see here. And I start going at it with acrylic paint at this stage. And I'm just trying to create textures over the drawing that already exists. Really digging in there, letting the drips, letting the streaks happen. You guys know I'm a texture junkie and I will embrace it as you can see here with some really thick paint that being laid down on top of this really one of the juiciest thickest paintings I've done in quite a while to be honest with you here I'm masking off Joan I did a little bit of uh, you know a light spray mount on the back of this uh, cutout of the actual drawing and I'm gonna clean up a couple areas and the reason I'm doing this is because I want to be attack the spattering that's going to be in the deep space as you'll see here here we go starting with a sponge that green and I didn't want it to get over the figure I just didn't want it to mess with anything else and uh, I can still see all that stuff through. Now, often what's gonna happen here is you're gonna see me lay down some paint and then throw some medium or water directly into that acrylic paint like that, and it's gonna cause it all to drip. I'm actually using one of those eyedropper things. I don't know what they're called, where you can squeeze up the water, and I'm spattering the water by squeezing that on there and letting those drips just ooze right down. A lot of blow dryer work is gonna be happening here as well to get things nice and dry. And sometimes I wanna freeze those uh, those streaks in, in place, right? Now I'm going over that with a little bit of medium and then spattering into the medium. When you do that, the white paint that I put down on top there is gonna dissolve a little bit into that paint. Jumping right into the palette knife here. I told you we were gonna get junky with this thing. Oh, what how fun was it to get in there with a palette knife and cut out some of the negative space? You guys know I love cutting out negative space and being able to go right up to the edge of that palette knife and bring it out, those sort of aggressive strokes give the appearance like some of the strokes are traveling behind Joan Jett's figure, which gives the piece depth. Notice I'm not letting a halo hang out between those strokes and Joan because that just looks like an unfinished portion of the painting. Using that same black, I'm actually cutting in some other areas, just kind of a knocking in my darkest nooks and crannies. And after that, I glaze some brown middle value over the shirt and certainly getting that into the arms and stuff as well. A little bit on the guitar, but we're not gonna mess with the guitar too much because it's a white guitar and we're gonna save some of that for later. But yeah, this is all still acrylic as I work in there. Now I'm using acrylic, but in the form of a Pigma paint pen. I mean, it's acrylic paint, why not? It allowed me to go in and draw some details. And I really love art that dissolves from drawing into opaque painting and rendering. It's super fun for me. So if I can find areas of a piece where I can do that, I, I love to embrace it. After that's down, you can see once again, I'm glazing a middle value on top of that hair to try to push it back in space a little bit further. Using a lighter paint pen, I'm going in and reestablishing the drawing of the lips and a couple of other things just really quick. I just didn't want to use black because then I'd be fighting that black line later when I go over with transparent colors. Yeah, really been enjoying using these acrylic pens to uh, do some sketchy cross-hatchy stuff uh, mixed with my painting lately. I, I need more colors because they're just pretty cool. I need like a whole gradient spectrum of them. All right, going in on the face now and we're just going in glazing over some middle values. I know it's hard to see there, but I'm slowly glazing it darker and darker around the edges, cooling it off on the shadow side of the face and just working it back and forth a little bit. And we're gonna go in with a fan brush and create a few more strokes and a few more textures about the piece. And while we got that fan brush in our hand, let's just go ahead and create a few more swirls and a few more textures everywhere else. Love a fan brush for creating that kind of texture. There you go, pretty nicely established. Now it's time for oil paint, that's right. We've got out the oil paint now and we're digging right in. So. If I didn't do this oil paint, when you have a real washy approach to a painting, sometimes it can feel dirty somehow. I don't know how to explain it, but it's almost like it's almost like it just felt a little dirty. And the idea of being able to go in with some opaques here and render it out adds like a cleanness with the dirty that is really fun for me. And when they and when they blend back and forth, it even gets a little bit more exciting. 
I'm going to lighten up the silhouette behind the head there. You see, I brought in some lighter middle, val middle values. You know why, because I wanted to cut out that hair and I didn't want it to fully disappear into the heart that is behind Joan. And we rendered up the face a little bit more too, giving it another path. I'm mostly using little flat brushes in this painting. Really like them because you can control those edges and you can use just the corner of the brush to do the most delicate things. But the liner brush, you know it's going to come out and I'm going to get my cross hatching kind of bliss on in a couple of areas as well. Time to go in and paint that hand. It was well drawn, but I had to worry a little bit about the structure of it and the rendering of it. This is the thing. Sometimes we see every single highlight in a hand and it's great if you're doing like old wizard hands and they're all gritty and gnarly, but sometimes I gotta be a little careful when I want the hands to be a little bit smoother. So the hands will get another pass later where I just try to blend a few more in-between values between what you see there and get rid of some of the hard creasing that's on those hands. But in the meantime, we're knocking in the guitar, which you, if you know me, you know I was excited to paint this guitar. This guitar is so iconic and so epic. It's Joan Jett's uh, uh, Les Paul, no, I'm sorry, a Gibson. And uh, it's just a wonderful, I don't think it's Les Paul. I think it's like a, it might be a, it might be a, a melody maker. I'm gonna have to research that actually. <laughs> anyway, so anyway, I'm digging in on this and just adding all the stickers and all the personal mojo that she put on this. I think that blue tape you see is for putting guitar picks on it maybe. And that orange thing might be a guitar pick that is waiting to be played if she drops it out. Yeah, but all straight oil paint on this guitar. I thought about doing it in acrylic first, but I've really been enjoying a little bit of a thicker oil paint attack than I normally would have done. In the past when I oil painted, it'd be a lot of translucent washes, almost like almost like uh, glazes, and then I might render into those glazes a little bit. I'm getting a little bit more into just putting down a nice thick buttery stroke on some things. And the thing about oil paints that's nice is I'm finding you can go in and manipulate it. So you're gonna watch me paint this guitar neck, and what I do sometimes is paint over an area and then remove it with a sharp stick or a Q-tip or something to almost carve out those highlights. Uh, so some of that fret work that you see and some of the strings that you see would have been done by painting over it with black and then removing it with a sharp point of some sort. That's looking nice and chunky now. Look at all that texture. Oh my God, I had a party on this thing. Let's do the rest of the fretboard here. Rendering up that hand too. It needed a little bit more work. When I work this way, because it's so loose and there's drawing going on and stuff, there's always a weird balance between like, okay, what can I leave really loose and what needs a little bit more rendering? So I just thought that hand needed a few more middle values and a little bit more. Certainly that arm needed a little bit more to bring it into keeping uh, with the rest of the figure. But we're not gonna touch that shirt. We're not gonna touch those pant legs. Just the fact that those legs just dissolve into strokes, I get so excited about. Gotta add the tattoos, of course. Now we're going in with a brush and we're slowly going in between the frets at first. And then we get a little bit more aggravated and just kind of like cover over the string stuff. You could see there. And we're not gonna render it all the way up there because I don't want to distract you with this exclamation point off to the side but enough, and there's me carving back through the paint. Those strings appeared suddenly by me sort of removing, basically I sharpened the back end of a paintbrush and I used that as a scribe to kind of cut back into stuff. Neat, and something I can't really do with acrylic because it dries so fast, right? Final thing, let's just get that acrylic out again because I never oil painted off to the left and the right so that's still all acrylic the only oil paint is on the figure and I'm able to go back in with some acrylic here and just make things drippy and awesome get the palette knife again I use the palette knife as a flicking texture device to kind of spit that paint on the piece added some really random stuff if it got out of control you can see me hit it with a water gun I just squirt it if it goes down to to stark while it's still wet hit it with a water gun and that will chill it out a little bit and there you go i love rock and roll i love joan jett She's a total icon and i had an absolute blast painting this and i hope to paint a bunch more of these rock stars um by the time i do my shows with wentworth so uh i don't know in the comments below let me know who you think i should paint all right next time